Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Fantastic. Okay. I'm just going to give people some time to like kind of come in if they want to, unless they're catching the replay. Perfect. All right. Okay, okay. What well, we should wait like a few minutes? Um and then get this started. Hey, yeah. if it's the three of us, just the three of us. Everyone else gets to catch the replay. Uh, someone <laughs> in the Facebook group is like, what time? And so I'm gonna reply to her really quick. <laughs> Do you want to stream it in the Facebook group too? Um yes, I can I can do that. One second. <clears throat> Perfect. This way, whoever, for some reason, can't get on Zoom, can watch it that way. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm so excited to talk about self-love. Woo! Oh, you have. Oh, okay. I, well, in case if I'm trying to stream into the group and then like somebody comes in and I'm like, I can't do it. Okay. Yeah. Stream. <laughs> As you can tell, we're not always showing up perfectly, <laughs> but that's okay. We own it. <laughs> Part of life is not, oh, not perfectly. That is it. That's the way it is. <laughs> no one really shows up perfectly. We just try to too hard exactly and we'll talk about that too <laughs> exactly exactly okay so all right let me know when we're streaming and we'll start and then if anyone else wants to join they can join as as they come or they can watch it on the live whatever trying i'm hitting the button but i don't know if it's doing anything let me check <laughs> i'm going right now no i don't see it in there okay it's fine oh technology Okay. Is it working? I know technology is the fun part. I know. Oh, you know what? I bet I know what's going on. Give me one minute. If you want to talk and get started, I, I can yeah. like... start streaming and doing a thing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's fun. I can start getting started. Make sure, oh, someone else is coming in. Perfect. <clears throat> Give him a second to get in here. Hello, Katie. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. People might come in as they as we talk, um, but we're going to get started here, um, and we're going to be streaming this into the Facebook group. Um, Amy's going to let me know when that starts. Um, and so we wanted to really, so Amy and I got together and we wanted to do something about self-love because this whole thing came about due to the fact that both of us have been on a, a similar um, like journey in human design. And I think we can both agree that self-love has been a huge part of that and a huge part of our transformation in our healing process uh, and like a huge part of our success. Um, I know for me, like if I didn't learn how to 
love myself on a deeper level, I wouldn't be where I'm at in my business or life or anywhere. And I wouldn't have done anything I wanted to do. I would have probably still been in the same position as I was working as a bartender, um, you know, for someone else always. Cause you know, it's just, it was whatever. I didn't really think about myself at all, let alone love myself <laughs> at that time. And like, so, I mean, this has just been such a huge, huge part of, of my journey and a huge part of what helped me in my success and everything. So we wanted to bring something that really helps everyone tap into their self-love on a deeper level. Um, I guess why it's so important too, is my journey with just this life. Um, I've always been, um, a bigger person growing up, like even in elementary school. So like I had to deal with a lot of like looks, I was developed really quick. So I was hypersexualized at a young age. Um, there was a lot. It was really interesting. Like comments on my boobs at like 11 years old. It was, and all this stuff, I didn't realize what was happening. So a lot of times, oh, it's being live stream. So if you're watching it from the Facebook group, feel free to comment, drop hashtag. I'm here, whatever. <laughs> um, so we're just talking a little bit about our story. Okay. So I kind of like always went through having to have people comment on my body, um, either for being too big or having large breasts or a big butt or like, you know, whatever it was or like, Oh, you're losing weight. Oh, you're gaining weight. Oh, you're this. Like at my whole life, people have commented on my body as I feel they do with anyone. Like no matter, um, if you're AFAB or if you are born male or whatever, I feel like a lot of people get their constant comments on, on their body and people, and we are, uh, conditioned in society society to kind of like think that's okay <laughs> and to do that and like we're just like oh okay, this is normal people can just comment on me all the time um so I had I struggled a lot because I thought I didn't look the way I was supposed to look uh I didn't look like what I was seeing as the typical um conventionally I guess attractive person that they they would show me everywhere um you know people would always comment about my weight uh, and even in, you know, I came out as a lesbian when I was 14 and even in the lesbian community, um, you know, you have like this, they had this like, oh, you have long hair, you need to be like femme, you need to be that, uh, and had like more standards. It's like, no matter where I went, all these fucking like crazy, ridiculous beauty standards to be the right kind of lesbian, which was ridiculous now that I think about it. Um, and so when I really stepped into my power and started to uh, discover myself on a deeper level through human design, I learned to love myself, my true self, parts of myself that I didn't know existed and parts of myself I did, but I repressed because I didn't think I can show them like my like super weirdness, my crazy personality, all that kind of stuff. That's a little much, but, in, but it's not. And people told me it was much. And that's what happened. Everyone's like, you're too much. And I got scared to show up. And then I came out as non-binary, um, which is something I always like resonated with, but never really wanted to do that because of what the world was telling me, um, because of the way I looked. Like I'm too feminine to be non-binary. I'm actually not. I'm like really in between. I, I go back and forth all the time, um, but you had to fit a certain standard. So my final like big movement, and it was just recently I came out and I came out in a huge post um, about being a non-binary lesbian. And it was like, it was just like the, like this whole weight off my shoulder. And when we finally, it's, it's hard to even, I mean, I think it goes the same with accepting my body. When I started to accept that I it was just going to have large boobs and I was just going to be a larger person. And like, I loved my body. I started to really accept my body. And I looked at my body and I did the mirror work and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And when I start, same thing, it was like this weight off my shoulder. Like my whole life, I've been told that I can't like myself because I don't fit into whatever fucking box they're trying to push me into as an AFAB person. And like, I was stressed and I didn't realize how much shit I was carrying. So when I finally came into my own fully, and that was like my, my final really big step, not that I don't continue to do self love work every day, but my really big step, I was able to like, just breathe. I was able to fucking breathe and like, just be like my whole like, clarity and everything. It was beautiful. And that inner peace grew even more. It was just powerful. That's a little bit about my story though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I relate so much to that story. Um, not, not the like coming out part, but like the being in a bigger body. Like I am um, just a bit about me. Like I am one of four kids in my family. I have two sisters and a brother and growing up, I was always the fat one. Like 
my um now I'm not always now I'm not the only fat one in my family so it feels a little bit different but it was pretty much like my mom and me and my mom put all of her insecurities around her body and gaining weight all onto me as a kid because um I'm the one who like looks the most like my mom in not only in my body but also like cur- like the dark curly hair we actually both kind of have like the highlights and the lighterness now too now that we're older it's kind of funny but like it's pretty much like my mom put all projected all of her expectations onto me like as this kid and as I was growing up like always being the big one and by the time I was in uh, like fifth grade I had like d or double d boobs by the time I was in sixth grade I didn't I don't even know what my bra size was I was wearing like two three bras a day um just like all these indents into my shoulders and uh, my parents put pressure on me because I grew up in a Christian community um like conservative Christian community to get a breast reduction so I had one when I was 14 because my my boobs were too sexual and I had to, I, I felt like I was dressed like a grandma when I was in middle school. And that's like when, you know, it's like, all oh, you have to be cool. You have to like do all these things. And I just never fit in. And um, even then, like I was all starting to, you know, you get curious about um, like sex and like boys or girls or whoever it is that, you know, you get interested, like sexually and like romantically and all this stuff and um anytime I expressed any sort of romantic interest in anybody um it was shut down it was inappropriate I couldn't do that like I used to go in online chat rooms and chat with guys and I had fun with it it was fun and I you know, it was, I I felt loved at that point. Like people were interested in my body. I felt like I could own my body and stuff, but I told people about it like at church and like it got out to like the adults and like I got shamed and in trouble for it. I couldn't be who I was. I couldn't explore things that, you know, as you're developing, you're meant to explore and it just got all shut down. And so, um, I didn't really feel or get the freedom to truly explore until I was 25. That's when I got, um, you know, I'm straight. So my first boyfriend at 25, my first kiss at 25. And then, you know, other people expect you at 25 to be so much more experienced. And so I got myself into these like tricky situations and um, experienced a lot of hurt and some trauma because I just didn't know what was out there because I was sheltered for so long and there wasn't a safe space for me to communicate things like with my body with what I was learning and everything and um when I it was like 25 like 10 years ago that I really started to like explore and learn and embrace like who I was and there wasn't a program like this there weren't people like Jackson and I talking about these kinds of things so publicly and I think that's one of the reasons why like we really wanted to put this out there because we want to have this safe space for anybody like no matter what like body size you are in no matter um what gender what uh what sexual orientation what uh what color of your skin like somewhere where you can feel safe to express and um be who you are like fully not just your body but also like who you are um, and your personality, um, you know, the way that, the way you want to show up online or even in person, the jobs that you want, like anything really, like it's not just about being in a bigger body. That's just a lot of the experiences that we have, but there's, there's just so much to this and so many layers to it. And we wanted to um, create this safe space to talk about these things and to learn how to move through them. And that's, uh, that's really a big part of like why we are here and what we're doing um, today in this masterclass movement thing. <laughs> I don't know what to For call sure. it. The movement, the masterclass, and we... <laughs> 
this is a movement. Self-love is a movement. And as you all know, like you've seen the body positivity movement and, you know, I'm sure like, I hope, I think most of you are probably familiar with it. It's been going on for quite some time now. And like that is, it's, it's literally a movement um, because this country uh, and well, this world has, and societies have taught us no matter where you're from, I mean, it may be a little different what exactly the standards are, but no matter where you're from, there's like some kind of societal standard that they want you to fit into, whether that be body, like you have to be skinny, have like this size, like breasts, or if you're, you know, a male presenting, have like pecs or whatever they call it, six, six pack, whatever <laughs> you can tell. I, I go to the gym, right? <laughs> um, so whatever it is, like, it's really like they put us into these boxes and not just, and I'm glad you said like, it's not just body because it's not, it's um, body, mind, spirit. They tell you what you have to believe. They, what feels good to believe. Like, are you this religion? Because this religion is, you know, more acceptable than this religion. Or, um, you know, like it's, if you have a, certain jobs, if you're like creative mind and you're like, I want to be an artist. Well, that's cool that you're an artist, but it's definitely like better to be like super successful and like make all this money and get the white picket fence or the house or whatever and like have kids like it's, it's literally like they're trying to put us all into the same path um and it's been that way forever and like it comes from the conditioning which amy's going to talk about in a second um and a lot of that has passed down from generation to generation i like that you mentioned your mother because that's the same thing with me like and my mom was tiny my mom was like not a big woman at all but she would tear her body apart i come she was grew up in the age of diet coke i don't know if any of y'all remember the 90s but diet coke was the drink of the 90s and what was the other one tab or something like that um <laughs> yeah throwback and so like literally in diet culture i think the 90s actually started like probably the biggest part of diet culture i mean i know it's been around but i think feel like that was like when it expanded into the like this huge massive like everything is like all the the videos and the programs and the pills and like it just ran and like so it was really kind of me watching my mother to attack her body constantly and as a even bigger person than her, I was like, and she wasn't even big. I was like, what the fuck? Like, and you don't like, what's going on? Like, why do I feel like I don't like, why are you, first of all, it made me sad to see my mom attack herself. Um, as a child, I was like, this is really sad. Like, I feel really sad for you. You're, you're my mom. I, I don't want to feel your, I want you feel making me feel this pain. Um, but also it taught me that my body wasn't okay and that I should pick apart my body. And I fucking did. I did throughout high school. I did throughout my early twenties. I really stopped giving a fuck like uh, towards my like mid twenties. Um, and cause as I got more into like, you know, the, um, deeper into like the feminist movement and, you know, stuff like that. So I really wanted to, I really like took all parts of that and I started putting it into place. Um, I still attacked my body though. And I still thought there was an image. I had it deep down conditioned into me even though you'd see me in person I'd be like fuck that all I'd be like oh, I hate my body at the end of the day it wasn't until I really started doing the deep inner work that I was able to push push forward and now I just want to say like but it was really about wanting the wanting to rebel so we talk about this act of uh, this movement this radical self-love and it is radical when we're talking about self-love and true un like when you break your conditioning of the self-hate into self-love it's a radical fucking movement because we're not just talking like simple oh my god my body you know it's any everybody's beautiful we're talking like deeper stuff like anti-capitalistic self-care we're talking like literally smashing the fucking patriarchy because this is where the condition conditioning has started we're talking like deep deep stuff that has been rooted in us from misogynistic um society and like all this in this diet toxic diet culture it's so much deeper than just like all bodies are beautiful. It's so much deeper. And even with the weirdness and how you act and how you show up, like you're everyone, you've been judged your whole life. We've all been judged our whole life by eyes that we don't even know half the time, like a society and a government and people like looking at us down the street, like who we don't even know. And they are, they're conditioned to judge. We're conditioned to judge and judge ourselves. And we're conditioned to be this like like have this ideal image and this ideal personality that they want us to have. So when we choose to truly step into self-love fully and learn how to love every fucking part of ourselves, and that means the shadows, <laughs> that means the light, that means the stuff that we really don't want to have to, you know, like we're not really sure about, but we fucking learn to love it. We learn to love it all. When we choose to do that, 
that is a fucking rebellion. This is why self-love is a rebellion. It's an act of rebellion because the rebellion is literally going against like basically the norm or what's conventional or you think about like the teenage rebellions and how people are like, oh my God, I'm getting a nose piercing because my parents don't want me to get a nose piercing. We talk about that all the time. Well, guess what? I'm loving my body because the government doesn't want me to love my fucking body. <laughs> like end of story. I'm loving my body because society tells me I shouldn't like I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. I'm loving my personality. I'm loving who I am. I'm stepping fully into my power and they can hate on it all they want. But like, this is what I'm doing. I'm not falling in line anymore. And when we choose to truly embody self-love fully and deepen our self-love, we get to do, we all get to rise up together and we create a culture, a healthy culture, a non-toxic culture. We're not, not giving into like, this is how you have to eat. This is what you have to do. We are literally creating pleasure and love. And we are fighting against that shit that doesn't fit in that, which is the big part for me too. But yeah, so really this is a rebellion and we wanted to come together and inspire people to join in the, the rebellion of self-love. Yeah. Um, and even like starting, you know, with just thinking about how things are set up and, and uh, something I didn't quite even think about until recently is also like people who are, um, who have like different bodies and like different limitations when it comes to movement, like how, how accessible are we having things um, like for people who are blind or maybe people who um, aren't able to walk. Um, and even like for, for a bigger person and even like different types of people like flying on an airplane, like I know a, a lot of people who have experienced fears like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to fit in this airplane seat? Or like people needing to buy more than one seat. Like this is all from like the businesses and the government and regulations um, that start from above. And I mean, that, that leads us into this like conditioning conversation and like what conditioning is, is it's like where you learn that it's like not safe to be you. And this is a term that I first learned about in human design. And this isn't like a human design thing. So if you don't know your human design, don't know any of that, that's like totally fine, but it's just where it stemmed from for me, but it's also like energetically, and with mindset things, like we, if you know anything about how the mind works and everything, we receive like subliminal messages, like hundred million times a day, like all the time through everything, through um, what we see on TV or like streaming stuff now, the music we listen to, the advertisings that we see, um, the magazine covers like maybe like if you're in a store and going by like there's so many subliminal messages that we receive like the laws of the government like tell you things you know like um oh there's something wrong with you because we have like you know this law and there's like so much like discrimination that takes place and th these are all conditioning you that's telling you that it's not safe to be you you know when uh, like if you are experiencing like something like let's say you break a heck like let's say you break your arm you know even if you're a normal person uh like nothing typically wrong with your body but you broke your arm like think about how the struggle of accessibility to like get into buildings or to like pick things up and everything like you're conditioned to believe like there's something wrong with you because your arm's broken because there's nothing there's very little there to help you or you have to like go out and like seek help and then or you have people like looking at you weird or like uh, not looking at you like oh we can't like we can't talk about this person we can't like acknowledge this person because they're different kind of a thing like that's all conditioning and um, the conditioning is also like where we shared with our stories like observing our moms like hating on their body like whether they're bigger or smaller um, even now like one of one of my sisters she's like really skinny like she freaks out like anytime she gains weight like when she had her kids like 
the changing of the body, like that's conditioning that other people around her are picking up. Like when she's having these, you know, talking about certain things, like, oh my gosh, I need to like get back to my pre-pregnancy weight and my pre-pregnancy body, like all those conversations that is contributing to like the conditioning that there's something wrong with your body the way that it is. And Um, like pregnancy is a great example for women um, who like choose to get pregnant because your body like is going through all these changes but we keep on seeing these messages that it's not okay and that's where like the conditioning comes in and um, there there's so many different ways it can show up it can be like through generational it can be like mental like through your beliefs or things that you perceive to be true things that you like pick up on and logically like come to conclusions about um when it comes to conditioning um you can be it can even be like an imprint like people like projecting their um things onto you and you take them on And that's like how conditioning can show up. And we talk about this and the thing is, is like, yes, there is conditioning, but you can always move through it. Like something that I learned from one of my mentors is like, you're not your thoughts. You're not your beliefs. You're the thinker of your thoughts. You're the believer of your beliefs. So you are in control. You get to shift these things. And the steps for this is first of all, becoming aware of it, become aware of, and that's part of what this, what this uh, movement is about. It's becoming aware of it, becoming more aware of like where these messages are coming from. And you're aware of it. You're like, okay, now you've also recognizing the next step is recognizing you have a choice. You get to choose what you believe. You get to choose a new way you get to choose yourself and then after that it's like recognizing you have a choice and then actually making that choice and then connecting to that new energy like that is really like how you decondition and it sounds simple but it's not necessarily easy um but I want to share like an analogy just to give yourself just a kind of I don't know, share how it can work a little bit. Like I heard this and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Like think about the language that we speak, like English, like we're, we're speaking English here. Like English is our native language, but if, um, at least for me, like when I was in school, it was required to learn a new language. When you're learning a new language, that's kind of like deconditioning. Um, and the process of loving yourself more is like, you're learning a new language. Oh, as a way of like communicating with yourself. And when you learn that language, it takes some time. And even if you become fluent in it, sometimes you're going to revert back to like your native language. It's just natural for you. And that's okay. But it's like those steps where you get to choose the new way. Like, even if you go back and, you know, even if you think like, uh, (laughs) heck, earlier today, like I was I had some, you know, fearful thoughts around like, oh my gosh, like what if, what if this doesn't go well? What if people don't want to hear what I have to say? And, you know, it's just working through it, working through and moving through those thoughts and coming to like a more positive place. And for me, like, this is all about like the impact and like helping people because I don't want people, I don't want like, I'm, I've chosen to not likely have kids in my life, but I'm a proud aunt. Like, I don't want my nieces or nephew to ever feel the way that I felt as a child, the way that I felt growing up. And that's like part of the reason why I'm doing this, because the more people that like I can reach or whoever can reach like with this message that you can love yourself, the more people who are loving themselves, like we can like overthrow like so much like negative thinking, negative, I I don't even like that word, but like all this negative stuff that's happening, we can change that, we can shift that. And that's like where I feel like got, I I tuned into my power. I tuned into what felt really good because I couldn't take, I could choose something new, like run through really quickly. Like the deconditioning process for me is, it's, it's almost intuitive at this point because I've been working through it like for a while. So, you know, I can recognize like, oop, 
I don't like that thought. Let me move through this. And sometimes it takes like, you know, an hour or two or whatever, like 30 minutes, like through my journaling process. Sometimes it takes days, like if it's a bigger thing um, that knocks me down. And, but the thing is, is where it used to take me like weeks or months or even years to move through something. Now it can take a matter of days. And that's like freaking, <laughs> I think that's beautiful. Um, that is beautiful. Yeah. So for sure. I actually, real quick, I would like to vibe for a second since you talk about conditioning on the, on the other part of this, the flip side of conditioning, which is um, our conditioning to be just as them, um, just as they want us to be towards others. And I think when we talk about self-love, this is something, this is where we get uncomfortable. This is the part of condi- the conditioning that we've taken on that's fucking uncomfortable and it sucks to sit in it, to know the shit you have done and we have done that was feeding into this. Like, how many times have I, like in the past, commented on somehow someone looks, someone's body, someone's shape, someone's act. Like how many times have I done that? I can't even tell you. I was equally as conditioned as the next person to think a certain way about certain, certain looks and certain way people look equally as conditioned. I, we don't escape that. We don't, we are, t- we are taught a lot and we're listening to our parents do that too, or whoever we were around. That's a big part of it. So I really wanted to bring this up too, because working through and doing self-love work is more it's deep within you of course it's you but it's also about learning to fully accept and love others as well for how they are without knocking them down too because a lot of times people will still keep that side of their conditioning I have did it the other day with my daughter without even realizing it she's 13 and she's recently developed and which you know what? Just like my fucking family and all my family are saying to her right now, like, oh my God, you have boobs, like pointing them out. Like this is a 13 year old. And we felt the need to point this out. And like, like I have an amazing partner who's like, you know, and pointed that out in me. So I was like, shit. And then it reminds me that this is the conditioning I was put into too. I mean, I'm not like saying anything bad about her body, but at the same time, I'm, you know, making it like this big deal, which is, it. I don't know how she feels about it. I don't know if she's like, weird about just growing into them and like if they're making her uncomfortable because or if she like is still trying to explore her body and understand that I, I don't know that and still I felt the need to comment like that is what I'm talking about even I just commented on my own child's body because I've been conditioned to do so I've been conditioned to comment on many people's bodies I have to keep recognizing when that shit comes up too too often are we to push that one aside and be like oh my god Oh my God, instead of just allow it to come up and sit in that discomfort and work through it. And it fucking sucks. Like I said, the same thing with doing anti-racism work. All, all of us are conditioned into a certain level of hate and, and especially, um, especially white people were very conditioned into this uh, white supremacist society. And in order for us to actually do anti-racism work, we actually have to face the fact that our families, our society condition us into that. And we have to do some rethinking and it requires a lot of fucking work and a lot of sitting in discomfort. But that is what, that is what that work means. (laughs) You can't ignore that shit. And so what I'm saying is like, if we are doing this self-love work, we have to do it fully. And we have to be prepared to even sit in the discomfort of shit that we don't want to face. We might not want to believe is true about us so that we can release it and make it untrue. Because like Amy said, it's our thoughts, our truths. We get to create them but we have to let that thing come up and like in order to work through it. We can't just be like, bye, no, that's not true. Sorry, I just had to rant on that for a second. I thought it was super important. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah, and um, for a lot, like, yes, like, and thinking about, you know, how we're interacting with other people, it's like, you know, how many times do you compliment somebody um, on their body or like even like, no, like, oh my gosh, your hair looks really amazing today. What about the days that it doesn't look amazing? Like, (laughs) or like normal days or whatever. Or or when people lose weight. That's a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times do we comment? Oh my God, you've lost weight. I don't say that to anyone ever, I, ever. I've, I've completely deconditioned myself to mention someone's weight. If I see someone and they've gained or lost weight, I, I have, nope, it's not even a thing I notice anymore because like, that is like, because people always follow it with like, oh, you've lost weight. You look so good now. And it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I looked good before too. Okay. Like, stop it. Like I always look good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's something 
I, I definitely have stopped commenting commenting on that. Like, um, so, like uh, I've been dating this guy or in a weird whatever thing with him for like a year and a half. And he's like, oh yeah, I lost like 60 pounds. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't even notice. I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> um, and, and that kind of did, like, I thought, like, I thought in my head, like, oh, I think you look smaller, but I'm not really sure. This was during like COVID and we weren't yeah. seeing each other all the time, but it was just something like I kept it inside. I was like, oh, okay. You look different. Well, you're, you're still attractive to me no matter what. So I, <laughs> I was like, eh, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, um, and people that I'm like, even people I'm friends with, like, you know, I don't even like notice. I'm just like, ah, are you, are you taking care of yourself? That's what I care about. Like, are you taking care mm-hmm. of yourself? Cool. I don't, re- I don't relate your body size to how healthy you are. Um, there's so many like layers to this, but yeah, like um, there's a book I read health in every size and it's like your weight does is there's a relation between like your weight and like certain health conditions, but like your weight doesn't cause those um, health mm-hmm. conditions. And that's what um, society is trying to tell us that weight causes diabetes. Like weight, like if you're heavier, like that causes heart problems. If you're heavier, that causes all these things. No, there, there may be a relation to it, but honestly, like our bodies, like you are the expert of your body and your body like knows like you're designed to be like a certain size like in peak condition or I don't even I put in quotes like I don't even quite know how to say it it's like your body is meant to be like a certain size like how you were originally like created or whatever like from birth or what and I don't even know like what it's supposed to be but it's really like when you're, you know, eating when you're hungry and not like mm-hmm. eating, not under eating, when you're like just moving your body, like that's really like what your natural weight is supposed to be. And everybody has like their own unique size that they're meant to be. And some are bigger and some are smaller. So just mm-hmm. be able to tune in and know, like, if you feel good in your body, that's all that matters. Anything yep. else, like, screw them all. It's all like conditioning that. All you of need it. To be a certain size in order to be healthy. So certain size, certain look, certain way. Like, and it's not even like that's definitely on the healthy front. But like, even like the way you like the way your face looks, the way you're presenting. Like, I think about the crazy thing. I think about is the man hand thing. You know how like if you're a woman, or, like an AFAB, so a, a side female at birth, and like sometimes you have bigger hands, and they're like, oh my god, man hands. Like it's a, a like they love to comment and shit like that. Like you're supposed to be dainty little fingers or whatever. Like. No, like the thing is, is like, we are all like, like Amy was saying, we all have our own style, our own bodies. Like we have our own types of hair, our own feet. Like nothing is going to be exactly the same. Um, our own noses, our own eyes. Like, so how the fuck are you trying to tell me to fit an image standard of one type of person uh, all around when that would be literally impossible? And the only way to do that is through toxic, toxic ways. So that's why we have things like, you know, the diet, diet culture, the diet industry, laser surgery, which I, by the way, like if anyone ever wants to modify their body, I'm totally cool with that. The thing is, it's your choice. I have no issues with any of that. Like, I don't think as long as it's coming from a place where you actually love yourself and not, um, a place of, and that is really important because you can love yourself at all forms. I mean, there's body mods in many different ways, like piercings, technically a body mod tattoos. So I mean, like whatever it is, Um, so whatever someone wants to do is fine with me and we allow them to do that, but like making sure that you're coming from a place of love for yourself and not a place of like trying to fit in or the fear that they, they put into you that you're too different. And that's another one too, too different (laughs) because they just want us to fit in. Yeah. It's crazy. And I don't like it. (laughs) Mm -mm, No, I, I dye my hair as you can, as you can tell, it's like two different colors right now. I, I feel in my in my soul that I meant to be a redhead, but I was born with dark brown hair. So I, I like redheads. That's cool. (laughs) I'm a redhead. I meant to be a redhead. It's, it's going to happen. Um, but that's okay. It comes like you do you, like, I, I have no, um, like judgments on people. Like, 
Mm -hmm. whatever they do to their bodies it's fine like I said as long as I just it's not even my place to like judge or anything like whether Mm -hmm. it comes from self-love or not but I would just hope it would come from loving yourself yeah rather than trying to change yourself to please other people so. true that's what we hope and that's why this stuff is really important to talk about um because before like we go it's, it's just important to let people know that it's okay to love yourself for all that you are and the things that you might that you have been told that might not be, quote the norm or the conventional way of doing looking being whatever it is and so that's why we wanted to come on here and just vibe on self-love and the power that is self-love um and also why we want to like move forward and like do this amazing program we're going to be coming up with what we just came up with called loved uh and it's literally a self-love radical self-love program so it's just like this but we want to get into that deconditioning because like amy said it's not easy and it takes time um and a lot of that holds us back in in a lot of different ways when i said that self-love is like one of the keys to success i wasn't joking like if i didn't learn how to undo the conditioning because a lot of my shadows were rooted a lot of our shadows in general are rooted um, in our love for ourselves. So like even like the shadow of doubt, um, which is like all in your head, like, I can't do this. I can't do this. What if I mess up? What if I'm wrong? What if I blah, 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 blah. We love self, self self-doubt loves all humans. It's a big shadow, a collective shadow. Um, Even that shadow comes, is rooted in not believing yourself, not truly trusting yourself, which is rooted in self-love. So like working through the deep conditioning that has been started from the day you were born and literally the day you were born, like it starts the conditioning of, of body, how you should look from, from, um, born males uh, getting like some of them having to get circumcision, which is a totally like vanity thing. Like that starts literally at that age is how you should look in some, in some areas or, um, like whatever we are literally immediately started. Like, is your baby cute? Like put them in this clothes. Like, oh my God, make sure they wear this. Like how fly is your like newborn, (laughs) like whatever. And it's like, we are literally hearing it. We might not understand it at that age, but we're already getting conditioned. Our our families, society is already talking about it. We're already seeing it on TV and our whole lives we grew up with that. So this is like the deepest conditioning that has happened. And so we wanted to create something where we can work through that conditioning together, break out of these boxes so that you can move forward and like learn how to truly love yourself on a super deep level. And not saying that a lot of us haven't done self-love work, but let's take it even deeper and let's be fucking radical about it. Let's talk about like that non-capitalistic self-care. Let's talk about how to like deal with internalized misogyny or whatever is happening there. Internalized, you know, I had to deal with internalized homophobia at one point. Like that, there's a lot of stuff that comes up. And so like, we really wanted to create something and like Amy said, a safe space for people to share their stories, to really come together and be able to like build this beautiful community of magical fucking humans <laughs> spreading this like awesome revolution, rebellion of self-love to the world. And be like, let's do it. Start in the fucking movement, you guys. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. Anyways, like, so we got this program coming out. And we wanted to let you guys know about it. It's eight weeks. Um, It's called Love. It is right now 888 Early Bird. And we're including a free self-love meditation. Oh, thank you for dropping that, Amy. (laughs) Free self-love meditation and a subliminal that Amy has created. As well, if you sign up by Monday, we are throwing in another free call. So just, you know, if you sign up by Friday, then it's Early Bird and you get the other two free things. If you guys have any questions, we're going to drop the info in the book and let me let us know and we'll talk about it. But it's going to be fire. This is for the person who's ready to really like do like some deep inner healing on themselves and on their self-love. So if you're that person, if you're looking to get to the real core of things and really start doing the deep inner deconditioning work, then this is the program from you. If you're not ready to do that, that's fine. But we're going to get we're going to get deep. We're going to get heavy and we're going to work through this healing so that we can bring more success and everything into our lives in every way and like find some inner peace and like that super awesome love. So it's going to be cool. And now I just want to we're going to do a Reiki infused self-love meditation in a minute. As you know, Amy's going to lead us. But I want to open the floor for a second to you, too, if you have anything to add, if you want to share a story or if you just have any questions um, or anything at all. If not, it's okay. Drop it in the, in the chat if you don't have anything. Um, otherwise, now's your time to unmute and you can ask us anything you want. Or 
Oh, I felt um, good. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm super excited about this. Um, just a little bit about the um, the bonus is I, I created a self-love meditation and then um, subliminal audios are my um, favorite way to rewire my mindset. And, um, and it's basically just like you're hearing just relaxing music. I play it while I'm working like all the time. And it's just giving your subconscious mind like positive affirmations and it doesn't let your conscious mind like bypass them. You know, like when you say like, oh, I am beautiful. Your subconscious mind is like, well, what about that big zit on your forehead? You know, kind of a thing like, or like, what about like your double chin and like, oh, you have a little space between your teeth. Like it just starts like picking a, a, um, a part. But like when you listen to subliminals, it's like your conscious mind is not even hearing them. So yeah. Um, you're getting that. And yeah, and uh, I'm not sure how to say your name, but I was yeah, thank you for the, for the comments and everything. And I'm glad you got um, some things to think about. Um, you will have um, access to the replay. It's in the um, Facebook group and I'm going to be sending out a link to, uh, for the replay after this, um, for everybody who uh, wants to watch it. It's not, uh, it's not going to expire. So if, there's things that you want to listen to again or like hear again like it's there for you um and, and then I think we have Katie here Katie if you have anything let us know otherwise I will um get started on the on the meditation for us <laughs> I'm so excited for this meditation I love it yes. meditation is one of my favorites and like so yeah, like meditation is a big part. It was a big part of healing for me too. I know Amy was talking about journaling as well. So we'll be doing a lot of like really practical stuff like that in the program as well and really getting into it and like what kind of helped us. Um, and like, we're just going to get raw and real. This is not a program for the faint of heart. We're going to hold space for you guys, of course, but like we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna dig deep and that's kind of the work we're, we're planning on doing here. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, uh, I've been getting into Reiki and I've been attuned for doing like Reiki distance healing and self-love is my jam. So, um, mm. and uh, like Jackson and I are both like very like, like in flow as far as putting things together. So they're like, if we're feeling like the energy calls for some sort of like healing meditation as we're going through this program, there will likely be more meditations coming through um, in the future. So mm -hmm. if it's something that you like, like healing and meditations have been like really huge in my um, uh, healing process in the past like year and a half, like I've gone mm -hmm. through a lot of transformations, like these have been like really huge. And so we're gonna bring that to the program also. Um, but now- Let's get this go don't have any questions or anything. Um, I'm going to lead us just through a quick um, meditation. So just, you know, get comfortable. Like you can close your eyes whenever you're ready and just like breathe, you know, take a few like deep breaths together, you know, relax. You can kind of, if you want to like move your head around, kind of move it like this or like roll your shoulders back, just kind of like do what you need to do to just kind of relax and get into your body. Um, if you're seated, plant your feet on the ground. You can lay down. I love laying down during meditations, but unfortunately I'm sitting at my computer to do this, but um, you can lay down for this. You can sit up, um, but just relax and take a deep breath in. and hold it at the top and then just let it out. Again, deep breath in, hold it at the top and breathe out. And deep breath in, hold it at the top and let it out. And I just want you to imagine 
that you're in this magical forest. You're on this path, there's trees around you. It's sunny outside and the sunlight's pouring through the trees. And you're just walking along this path and then you reach like this valley. Valley with green lush grass and sunflowers and you feel your feet just in the dirt in the grass and it feels really cool and I just want you to imagine just sitting down in this valley and imagine roots just coming from the earth coming through the bottoms of your feet and then all the way up your legs all the way up through your hips, around your root chakra, just grounding you to the earth. Then I just want you to imagine coming from the sky, from the universe, this pink light, just coming down and it hits the crown of your head. And this is a healing light and it's coming through the crown through your third eye, through your throat chakra, all the way to your heart chakra, and it's illuminating your heart chakra. It's illuminating and bringing its healing light to your heart. And I want you to just think about something that you love about yourself. Whether that be the color of your eyes, the way that you speak, your handwriting, your friends, the way that you're able to make friends, your voice, your hair, your skin, just anything that you love about yourself, your legs. And just sit with that love. And allow it to grow. And send that love Maybe something you don't love about yourself. You know, whether that be it's a body part or maybe something you've done that you don't really love or like a circumstance. And I just want you to send that love that you have and expanded, like send that to the part that maybe you don't love as much. And if it helps, imagine like that pink light, like sending that pink light, that pink healing light to what you're not loving so much right now. And just breathe into it. Like just take a minute, breathe in. And then when it feels better, when you can feel that love, you can just imagine that situation or whatever it is that you don't love just kind of dissolving and morphing into like that pink healing light, and, like sending it back into your body back into you. Then I just want to share with you some 
affirmations. I just want you to repeat them in your mind. Like, I am loved. I am enough. I am beautiful just the way that I am. I am enough just the way that I am. I am loved even when I don't feel loved. I am worthy. I am worthy just as I am. I don't need to do anything extra to be loved or to feel worthy. I am worthy. I am enough. I am strong. I am powerful. I am magnetic. I am enough. And I am loved. I love myself. I am strong enough to love myself. I am love. And just sit for a second. Just breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in again. And breathe out. And just feel the pink healing light from before just radiating around your body, radiating out around your body, surrounding you with love. And it feels like a warm embrace, a warm loving embrace. Just sit with this for a minute. Then we can send the pink light back up into the universe and just allow that feeling of love just, just to just stay with you. And we're slowly gonna come back into our bodies. Just take a deep breath in and breathe out. And breathe in again and breathe out. And one more time, breathe in, breathe out. Now you can wiggle your fingers, go through your toes, just come back to your body. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And for anyone who's catching the replay, let us know. Use the group, ask any questions, share any stories. Challenge you all to share a story of your self-love journey, anything that you have, feel like you've gone through or need to talk about. Yeah, thank you guys. And uh, yeah, like I said, the replay will be coming out and it, it's also in the Facebook group. So, all right, we will talk to you later. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Bye.